I call this thing Shen Ramen, but my Korean friends always tell me it's actually called Shen Namyeon. And today I found out that its official name on the bag is Shen Noodle Soup. <laughs> Stupid now, huh? So I scoured across international social media and found five of the most creative ways to cook this college nostalgia. Let's get started. Our first recipe is chili oil noodles. It was first started on Korean social media and then popularized by English speaking creators like Lisa Nguyen and Dubi Duba. Basically, you want to pour in half of the seasoning packet along with two teaspoons of soy sauce and one teaspoon of Chinese black vinegar. Create about three to four cloves of garlic. If you get injured by a microplane like this, it takes about two weeks to completely heal. Don't ask me how I found out. Once we have all the ingredients ready, we'll move on to the stove. I always put my instant noodles directly into cold water like like this because I feel like it hydrates faster. Plus, I don't think putting it in after the water boils makes it any healthier. While the noodles are cooking, we'll heat up about two tablespoons of oil. Any type of oil should work except for, um, Jamie Olive Oil. Yeah! yeah. You want to heat the oil right before it reaches smoking point, and when you can't distinguish it from water, it means it's hot enough. I'm going to pour all this hot oil onto the plate we prepared earlier, and I'll give you a little bit of a ASMR. Mix it all up and our chili oil is ready. After draining the noodles, we'll dump it all in. And here's more ASMR. After it's mixed thoroughly, we'll move it aside and then start from. Later. We'll use the residual oil in the pan to fry up an egg. My apartment's been smelling so good as soon as that hot oil hit the garlic earlier. The oil really activated all the flavors and aromas in those ingredients and also made it kind of creamy too. There's really not much need for a taste test because you already know it's going to be fire. Now we break open the egg, mix it up real nice, let the yolk evenly sort of distribute into the noodles. I'm very excited to taste and ready to entertain. It's creamy, silky, rich, with a hint of spicy kick from the seasoning packet. And all that MSG in the packet combined with the garlic and chili pepper aroma are activated by the hot oil. This incredible recipe is extremely simple and can be put together in less than 5 minutes. Once in a while you come across something that changes your life forever, and this recipe is one of them. 9.3 out of 10, highly recommend. Let's move on to the next recipe, I'm all fired up now. This recipe uses the same technique from the sauce of carbonara. We'll start by putting everything in a bowl including 1 egg, seasoning packets, 2 cloves of grated garlic, a couple pinches of bacon bits, chopped up scallion, and a little bit of chili paste. When everything's ready, you just beat it together. I sincerely apologize I don't have the ligma fork at this moment. Now we're gonna cook some noodles. Make sure you don't drain out of the water because we're gonna use it. We're gonna turn this brown slimy thorough into a beautiful red creamy sauce. I'm too lazy to take out another bowl for the noodle water, so I'm just gonna pour it directly above. Once it resembles a homogenous sauce, we'll take out the noodles and pour it in. I guess the concept is really similar to the last recipe, except this one is with egg and hot water instead of oil. The fact that there's a raw egg in it makes me a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm gonna use the ligma fork to protect me from all evil. A lot of you have been DMing me and asking me how am I still alive after eating all that radioactive chicken. Well, this is the secret. Now let's give it a taste and radio entertain. I don't think it tastes that good, but I suspect that it's because the last recipe tasted too good, and this one is too similar to it. It has all the same flavors, it's just slightly on the watery side, and also has a little bit of that raw egg smell. And due to those reasons, I'm gonna give it a 6.9. What is 6.9? A good thing ruined by a period. <laughs> 
So our third recipe is going to be very unfriendly to our lactose intolerant audience. The first step is to turn a sausage into these octopus looking things. Right now I'm just removing the casing. As I told you before, the professional culinary term for this step is called circumcision. And I just realized this sausage matched perfectly with my shirt. Talk about meant to be. We basically want to cut the bottom half of the sausage twice perpendicularly to create those four legs. So hopefully when we boil them, it will take into shape and spread like this. Moving on to the interesting part. This is going to be a milk-based shin ramen broth. About two cups or so. You don't have to use expired milk if you don't like it. Now we just follow the procedures of making a normal bowl of shin ramen. Oh, excuse me, shin noodle soup. The funny thing about milk is that when you look at it, it will never boil. But as soon as you take your eyes off of it, now we turn down the heat a little bit and drop in our sausages. To make it look like an octopus, I'm gonna stuff all my noodles in between their legs. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. They didn't really take up the shape, but I'll try to arrange them as similarly to the original ones as possible. That's the best I can do. And to complete this dairy dish, I'm gonna put a slice of mozzarella on top. So here we have it, a cheesy milk-based shin ramen with a depressed octopus sausage as garnish. This is probably the nightmare of every lactose intolerant person, but look at this cheese pole. Let's grab our ligma fork, give it a taste, and rate it 1 through 10. Take a look at the mess I just made. This is exactly why you need this apron. The Future Canoe store is officially online. These aprons are oil and waterproof, and the tomato bag over here can give you some swagu wagyu. First 10 viewers from this video will get a 15% off, and most importantly, free shipping on all orders. At this moment, it's only for the US, working on making it worldwide soon. Usually when you eat shin ramen, it kind of tastes like noodles in spicy water. And this recipe offers that richness it's been lacking. It's probably better to eat this recipe in the winter. You can see here the broth got really thick and creamy. Kind of reminds me of a bone based broth. Taste wise, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. But overall, I'm feeling a little sick right now. I can't tell if it's the expired milk or the pink sausage. This recipe is the one I'm most curious about. It has over 10 million views on TikTok. It's like an imitation of tonkatsu ramen. All you need is an egg yolk, the seasoning packet, and I give a second chance to QP mayo. I feel like the yolk here is a little redundant since mayo is basically just egg yolk sauce. Like my fork it all together till it looks like a red thick paste. After cooking the noodles, we'll slowly pour the water into the bowl, constantly stirring with the ligma fork to keep it homogenous. When it starts to look like a legitimate broth, will pour the whole pot in. The smell that's coming out of the bowl is reminding me a lot of bone broth. Can't believe just a second ago this just mayonnaise and water. Finally, garnish with scallion and that marks the completion of our mayo instant noodles. Before we give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10, I'm gonna try to minimize the mess by swirling it on a sigma spoon. I am beyond impressed with this recipe. If you don't tell me it's made of mayonnaise, I would have never guessed. But since I have that information in the back of my mind, I do have that mayonnaise aftertaste in my mouth every time I sip the soup. Overall, this is really easy to make and easy to swallow. It deserves a solid 8.2 out of 10. It's definitely gonna make it to my next struggle meal video. Our final recipe is a cold dish. It's supposed to imitate the Korean cold noodles, or also known as namyeon. As you can see here, I'm starting with a seasoning packet and a spoonful of soy sauce, a spoonful of rice wine vinegar for the acidity, actually two spoons, a teaspoon of sugar, and the rest of my scallion. We're diluting all this with a cup of cold water. We're also adding ice cubes to it later. We'll set this bowl aside for now because I need to go into my bedroom to get the rest of our ingredients. Just give me one sec. 
We're gonna cut the cucumbers into really thin strips. I learned this method from my mom, so if you have a better way of cutting it, let me know in the comments. This is how they look. Once you squeeze them all together, you can't really tell some of them is not cut all the way through. Here we are with this questionable pink sausage again. A lot of you have been asking me in the comments where I get these radioactive protein. But the truth is, I'm not actively looking, but rather I'm chosen by them. So it's just like a Ferrari dealership, except it's pink meat. Alright, now I'm gonna teach all of you how to make a perfect soft boiled egg. As soon as you drop your egg into a boiling pot of water, you have to set your time to 6 minute and 9 seconds. When the timer's up, we put it in an ice bath. You probably want to avoid cooking one single egg because it might get bored and make a popcorn, just like this one over here. I've literally never been able to peel a perfect looking egg in my life. Every time I try to do it, people suspect that I took a bite out of it like this one over here. Here's where that little piece of popcorn comes in. You can place it exactly where the gap is and make it look like a wholesome egg. Uh, from a distance, of course. Since it's a cold noodle dish, you want to put them directly into an ice bath after boiling to stop the cooking process. Also, avoid clumping. Now we have everything ready and it's time to assemble. We'll first lay our foundation of well-chilled noodles. You can pour the ice cubes in there, it doesn't matter. We'll throw in some extra ice cubes in there just to keep the broth as cold as possible. We'll throw in a big handful of cucumbers for the crunchiness and the refreshing herbal notes. And finally, you already know, it's not a future canoe video without questionable meat on top, even though I prefer my meat on the bottom. Oh, I almost forgot the egg. We'll slice it open and just put it on the side. I've never had Korean namyeon before, but I suspect this does not even come close to the authentic one. And since this dish looks so weird, I'm gonna take a thumbnail, and I'm gonna ask you guys on Instagram if I had successfully created namyeon. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it it's like stock. This one is a little more ruthless than usual. To be honest, I myself is a little reluctant to eat this dish. But you know, you never judge a book by its cover, and you never judge Future Canoe's dish by its color grading. So let's mix it up a little bit, taste it, and rate it one through teen. Cheers, everybody. I think the song perfectly describes how I feel right now. There's so much going on in the dish, I can't really put my head around it. I overcooked the noodles so it's really soggy, and it mushes it in with the cucumber slices. And the broth is freezing cold, so when the egg yolk hits the broth, it coagulates into this really waxy, thick paste that sticks on the roof of your mouth and it wouldn't let go. I feel a little bit violated by that egg yolk, because usually I'm really good at swallowing things. But anyway, Anyways, I hope you at least find some of these recipes applicable and make it at home. I just want to take a moment and thank all of you for 300,000 subscribers. I haven't been doing content for too long, so I know I'm not the most talented creator. That's why I'm extremely grateful for all the support I've been getting lately. Even with this merch launch, a lot of you reached out to me personally, gave me great advice, helped me set up shop, and I even get to meet one of you next week to teach me how to manage inventory. If you're interested in supporting the growth of our community, you should check him out. I really think you'll like it. But anyways, as you can hear, I'm fully recovered from being sick and I have a lot of radioactive chicken dishes coming. Alright, thank you.